All right, now that we've finished up with most of the covers, pretty much one of the last steps we have to do here is to put the carburetor on. Uh, the first thing I recommend you do is get your isolator block if you're using one of the plastic ones and really give it a good inspection. A lot of people will use these and they'll have big cracks in them or it'll sustain some form of damage and that can really create a lot of havoc. If you do have a crack in these, you're almost guaranteed an air leak. So this one looks like it's in really good shape. I don't see any obvious signs of damage to it. So we'll just reuse the same one. We need our gaskets. This gasket's pretty much universal. If you put it on here, as long as you're lined up with the right holes, um, it, it, you, you can't put it on wrong. It's just obviously lining up with these two holes, not the ones with the nuts set in them. So this one are two screws. Actually, we're going to use some Loctite again. A little bit of blue. This one, again, you can probably use red. Probably better off using a little bit of red, but I'm going to stick with blue for now. those in. Again, make sure our gasket is correctly aligned. And drop that guy right on there. Again, start both sides to make sure everything's locked in place. Give it a quick look, make sure our gasket didn't fall out of place, it's intact. And before we tighten them down, we'll get them both just touching and then give it a good hand tight. You don't want to crush these. They uh, just, again, you want them very snug. So our isolator block or intake manifold is on. At this point, we need our carburetor. So I'll reach over and grab the carburetor. So that's our old gasket which we're going to discard. We're going to use all new gaskets. We want to give the carb a quick once over, wipe any kind of dirt or crud that's left over. This one's actually pretty clean. Uh, also make sure that when you reinstall your carburetor that you do orient it correctly. One side will have what's called the pulse port and that of course is going up against your intake manifold or isolator block. Again we've got our brand new gasket. It's going to sit right there. Now we've got our two big long bolts, a little blue Loctite on these guys again. This is going to go through your air filter adapter. This has an old gasket on it too, I forgot to take off, let's pull that guy off. Normally you'll want another fiber type gasket similar to this. We are out of them so we're actually going to use the thicker isolator gasket. Through there, onto our carburetor onto the choke side, our fiber gasket, and that is going to screw down to our intake manifold. place. Again, you don't want to wrench these down, just get them started. Make sure everything's lined up and nice and straight. Just go back and forth. Get that snug down. And we're set. Our carburetor and air filter adapter are reinstalled. All right, last but not least in our series here, we just have two more items to go, the can and the spark plug. So the exhaust can, again, nice fresh gasket. Uh, on this, always use red Loctite and don't be shy with it. Um, we're going to be pulling this off, so I am actually going to be real light on it because we will be pulling this can off. But usually if you're going to be putting a new pipe on or something, be pretty liberal with the red Loctite. Uh, it's going to see a lot of heat. It will break it down. So get that started. Again, just get the bolt started just so it holds the gasket in place. At that point, then kind of slide it down.
good lord. Get those nice and snug. Cans all on. And last but not least, spark plug. Using our spark plug wrench. And get that snug down. And we are done. One rebuilt 26 with a new top end. Okay. All right, so here's our final assembled motor. We've mounted it up on this uh, kind of cool little test stand so we could do a little braking and testing and tuning. Uh, most of you already know how to start these, but anyways, once it's mounted up and we've got our fuel lines run, uh, we're just gonna prime the fuel line a few times, get, uh, get the fuel flowing through the carp, and then uh, we're gonna flip the choke down and pretty much from there we're going to pull. I, I like to actually get this thing to top dead center. You can kind of feel when it catches. And at that point just... You'll hear that first pop. At that point you can turn the choke right off because uh, you've got enough fuel in there to start. And at that point we're just going to get it started. Okay. 